Los Angeles. Our wonderful city is synonymized worldwide for one staple problem. It's not kale smoothies. It's not paparazzi. It's not even Kim Kardashian. It's a problem you almost certainly faced when getting here today. Traffic. I'm going to tell you about a technology that promises to change the way that we consider value itself, the way that we communicate, the way that we transact across borders. But before telling you about that, I need to explain LA's horrific traffic. At the turn of the 20th century, LA really kicked off our love affair with a motor car. Unbeholden by geographical limitations, we were able to spread outwards in an urban sprawl, fueled by the car. This worked up until about mid-century when LA's population hit three million and cars just, roads just weren't cutting it anymore. To deal with this, we built even bigger roads to deal with even more cars, which worked up until about 1982 when we were named America's most congested city, a title we've done pretty well to hold almost ever since. Not only are these roads completely inefficient, but they're not very safe either. In fact, last year, there were nearly 60,000 crashes on LA's roads. As more and more people pour into the city, freeways are proving to be a pretty poor mode of transport. On the other side of the coin, we've all heard about mythical cities like Tokyo and New York, places you can jump on a train, know exactly where you're going, and all of that without having to risk that the Lexus right next to you, the guy has uh, had a couple of whiskeys and he's going to smash into you on the way. I want you to take a look at the internet. The internet is the 405 freeway, the 405 freeway that you trudged along to get here this morning. The internet is based on the TCP and IP protocols, protocols that were set out more than 30 years ago to allow ostensibly peer-to-peer -peer communication, which is just between you and me. This worked for a while, but before long, it became commercialized. Big databases started to take ownership of the data. And in order for, trans for the translation of data between these databases, we required the authentication from a trusted third party. If the freeway is the translation of this data, then think about it like a server sends our car to the intended destination, and we trust that it arrives there on time. However, this idea of trust is starting to fall at the wayside. Think about last year. Yahoo announced that one billion of their users had their data hacked. One billion. Trust just does not exist in this ecosystem anymore. There is no way for people to be able to communicate in a way between each other because we must entrust on these third parties. However, it is not doom and gloom for the future of the internet. Well, it doesn't have to be. The advent of blockchain technology, probably best known through Bitcoin, has made a change in the way that we fundamentally transfer value. Blockchain technology is probably best understood as a shared database or a shared ledger of information. I like to think of it as like a Google Doc or a Google Excel sheet. Everybody within the community can be involved on that Excel sheet. Anything that happens is communicated onto that ledger, and if someone puts the wrong information on, we can out them, we can say, what are you doing here? What are you putting that information that is patently wrong? People can't edit the history of what's going on because we all have access to the single source of truth. This was the plan that was set out in 2008 with the advent of Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, People become their own banks. People are no longer stuck with Venmo and Chase and Swift that take exorbitant fees from your transactions. Instead, you must trust only in the centralized authority of code or a decentralized authority. With the code, suddenly we are empowered again. And because blockchain is, Bitcoin is based on a universal distributed ledger, Everybody can see every transaction from the very beginning right through to today. You can download that ledger. You can see every transaction that has occurred. And as such, it is unhackable. In fact, the Bitcoin blockchain has never been hacked. And that is true of all blockchain applications. 
that can't be said of the traditional IBM database. We see hacks all the time, every single day. Now, with this, lack of, with, with this new introduction of a new trust mechanism, a way that we can reconsider value, I think it is most fundamental to try and, trans, and, try and communicate that with as many people as possible. My job as a publicist, I work every day to try and increase the mainstream understanding of blockchain technology because it has the power to change the way industries work. It has the power to change the way we transfer records in healthcare, the way that we transfer important data in advertising. Because of this, I'm trying to increase this baseline understanding. It's not just me that is understanding this. It is major industries. All these industries are starting to recognize that yes, blockchain is the future. In fact, the World Economic Forum last year projected that by 2020, 10% of the global gross domestic product would be based on blockchain databases. 2020 is just a couple years down the line. That may be a lofty prediction. However, I believe it is tenable. It just takes a greater mainstream understanding to try and activate that change. It takes people like you and me understanding it and forming that grassroots catalyst towards that improvement. If you think of the LA freeway situation, 10 years ago, it was even worse than it is today. People got on the freeways and they were sick of sweltering in their cars on the freeway. So they said, look, I want alternatives. And alternatives have been coming. We've been seeing more cycleways, more bus lines, more trains. That has happened from the grassroots activism from below. That same concept can be applied to blockchain and overtaking the current systems. It just takes us understanding the benefits in relation to the flaws of the current system. So, you now know we have a distributed system that reinforces transparency, that pushes us towards distributed trust. How, you may ask, will this engage human potential moving forward? I think perhaps the best industry to look at for how blockchain can really affect the transfer of trust is healthcare, the broken healthcare system. Right now, you would hope that every single person had access to a full scope of their medical history when they went to the doctor. For instance, if I was in Oregon and I had some kind of allergic reaction, I would hope that my doctor would be able to see the history of my medical, uh, my history of my medical history so that I could get the best diagnosis possible. That is not the case. Right now, this Oregonian doctor is stuck with partial information, hearsay that you are able to give him, because healthcare providers, healthcare payers, healthcare players are unable to transfer information because of the insufficient technology that it is based on. Right now, databases can't speak to each other. And the trust makes sense. In 2015 alone, there were 113 hacks of medical records. That's probably a lot of you in this room right here. This trust, makes, this trust makes sense, but there are alternatives, and that is blockchain. Especially over the last couple of years, there has been the advent of a new thing called a smart contract. With a smart contract, people can stipulate terms before a deal, and then these terms execute once both sides have pulled in their side of the bargain. For instance, if you offer me 10 Bitcoin to do this speech, as soon as I walked off the stage, this Bitcoin would be sent right into my account and I'll be 10 Bitcoin richer. The same thing can work for electronic health records. If we have a distributed database of information, then when you go to see your doctor in Oregon, you can give him temporary access to your health data and he can give a more accurate diagnosis. This same idea of smart contracts can work in a more holistic sense as well for identity management. I think with blockchain and smart contract configurations, we can start to see a humanitarian passport. People across the world can have a democratized identity. Everybody can be plugged into one globalized database of who they are, give their presence within the world as equal to everybody else. For a microcosm of what that could look like, I want you to think of when you last bought a beer at a bar. When you bought a beer at a bar, 
you brought your plastic ID along, and you said, hey, give me a beer. First they said, well, are you 21? And then you had to prove, yes, I am who I am, and I am 21. But you give them your driver's license. In your driver's license, you are providing them with your date of birth, your state of origin, your exact location, your height, your weight. You do not need to provide them this with this information. If we were to transfer this digital identity to a blockchain smart contract, you could provide them only the yes and the no. Yes, I am 21. Yes, I am who I say I am. The rest of the information can be inferred by this universal single source of truth, the distributed database. This idea of identity management can, has actually been translated into many other industries. And I think probably the most exciting version is recently the, the NGO, the startup NGO, BitNation, produced a universal identity for Syrian refugees, people that need it most. These people had no home. They are war-torn. They have no ability to fetch who they really are by physical identities. What BitNation provided was a universal blockchain database where these people, using people, the community around them to give the consensus and agree who they are, they could plug this identity into this distributed database and become a global citizen. This is powerful because this gives them ability to prove who they are. If they are lost, suddenly they, they existed. You have proof that they existed. Not only that, but they can sign up for a credit card. There's so many opportunities for somebody to have a digital identity. Think about for finance. And I think this is probably where we've seen the greatest strides so far in blockchain technology has been in the fintech sector. Companies like BitPaza have given people in Africa a means to have, in sub-Saharan Africa, a means to have proof that they exist in the financial sector. Right now in sub-Saharan Africa, two-thirds of the people within those nations are unbanked. They have no financial identity. For someone living in a small African nation, even if he may have the best rice in the world, he's a farmer, he can only trade this with the most local of people, people within driving distance, with a blockchain identity, with that financial instrument to give them this globalized access. Suddenly, they can sell their wares throughout the world. Suddenly, they can become a global financial citizen. This is the essential power of blockchain technology. And what BitPaysa provides is it gives democratization of person. Suddenly, people are global citizens. And I think that is, that is perhaps the most important message moving forward. For me, I'm trying to translate this message to as many people as possible. Because the more people that know about it, the more people can act on it, can activate, can ask people, ask the companies that they utilize every day to employ these systems, to adopt these systems that are inherently superior. So, blockchain gives us the ability to own our own identities, own our own data, have access to better healthcare. It is my job to communicate it to the community, but it is our job together to demand this change. Thank you.